Hello and welcome to Bilti's Business Book Review Number 5. This is The 8020 Revolution by Richard Koch. It's a fantastic book and it's really about time management. So we all know what Pareto's law is that 80% of the effects are created by 20% of the actions. And, you know, you think, yeah, yeah I, I kind of get that. And we live it in everyday life. We know it, you know, but we don't actually think about it. He expands on this. And it's a way of really focusing on the things that matter in life, for you as a person, in your business, and how you uh, deal with things coming into your, uh, you know, to eat up time. Um, and he expands on it in uh, page 88, which is my bit that really blew my mind. And uh, quite a lot of people say to me, how do you manage to get so much done in life? And this book was seminal in me being able to actually really prioritize on the things that matter. So here, and it it's a little bit easier. It's quite numbers driven, and I'm not a numbers person. I can't even, I can't even do my own expenses. So it's not technical you can follow it through but it does need a bit of concentrating as well this is this combining einstein and this is his theory of relativity which is quite interesting in itself with pareto we discover that if 80 percent of the wealth or anything else desirable we create happens with less than 20 percent of the time available then there is no shortage of time and i thought actually cool fucking yeah so really just focus on the things that matter and be self-aware and that for me made me realize that instead of being a generalist and doing a bit of everything and all this kind of stuff and filling me a day with stuff loads of stuff I mean don't get me wrong there was no shortage of stuff that I needed to do but it wasn't stuff that I was the best at doing and it, it and I'm not an introspective person at all and it made me having to think about what I was good at and that's a bit uncomfortable because we're all, I'm a bit anti-ego and most people are kind of a bit the same. They don't like to think, oh, I'm better than, you know, this is my best bit. But you do have to think about that and then focus on that for the for, for your time. Do as much of that as you can and delegate the other 80%. So for me, that meant biting the bullet and getting a PA. And I've never had one before. Uh, I had that. And then being really rigorous with myself, self-discipline. Uh, to delegate to that person and it made me realize that I mean obviously delegation is an art in itself so you've got to delegate to people that you can trust and that you've got checks and balances in place as well so it's not that you don't trust them but sometimes they they're human they can slip as well so you've got to check some balances so you can make sure you don't have anything you know, close those loops on there um, and it made me really focus my time on where I could create most value so i i kept the 20 percent i did best which was uh, selling strategy uh, people development and then delegated everything else because operationally i'm a lost cause and numbers wise i can't even add up so uh to keep those to, to one side that created a huge opportunity for me to go out and do things one of the things i did with that time was my diy mba uh so you do like an mba but my own one, where I had reading and I could do vid watch videos, go and see di different companies and stuff. So I had half a day a week created from this, where I can then go out, and it allows you to grow as a as a person, as a business person. Uh, but you know, also meeting a much wider network of, of people, which is fantastic. You focus on the things that um, you play to your strengths. Really, that's the top of it. Now in business, we have a similar kind of thing. We all know that 20% of our customers create 80% of our GP. That's, you know, give or take, that is always the rule that you have. <clears throat> and what he does in this book, it's actually illuminating, isn't it? In this book, I'll take, I'll take the cover off, sorry. Um, is he comes into the concept of de-averaging. So we all average out this and average out that. We bundle everything together. So we've got an average GP of this and we want to drive it up to that. And that's so you say, no, 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 don't do that. De-average. Look for the 20% within everything that you get exceptional. Because then you can create an exceptional company. So you, you de-average to find the 20% of the right size of customers, the lifetime value of the customer, the product that, the, by that you make the highest, the top, uh, G, 
GP, 20% of GP, the you know, service line, how you deliver the service to the customers, which is the most profitable customers, and then look for more of those. So instead of looking at averages and all that kind of stuff, you de-average and look for the top 20% of everything and then bundle those together to give you an exceptional performance. And he says in there, which I quite like, think small. So don't look for the big, look for the little that are in there, those nuggets that you can then drive the business forward. And it gives you some really handy hints, both on an individual level to find your 20% better of a business to find uh, the 20% of customers, the 20% of products, the 20% of service lines that you can deliver, which uh, uh, give you the biggest opportunity. And the last bit of this book is about talent and recruitment, as it always is. A business is a bundle of people working well together. And it's saying the 20% of your, of your people within your uh, your team create 80% 80, 80 of the value, typically. Which is uh, a brutally kind of... Uh, hard thing to take quite often um, because you no doubt like those people that said right delegate the biggest opportunities to those the most talented people because they will maximize them look at ways of uh, recruiting the best talent as early as possible in their career and over paying them because there's an uh, analysis in here that is done which is saying it's these people are worth not one or two times but 16 times more value than the average employee if you get them right. Now, the, the challenge with that is that you find is that there's um, that's 80% of the people that create 20% of the GP. And this is the co concern that we've got within business. Unless you completely reinvent yourself and keep your skill set up, and hopefully this uh, furlough period will allow people to reinvent themselves and learn. Those that sit at home playing on, uh, you know, Fortnite or, you know, watching box sets and whatever, it's a scary, a scary place you're going to come back into. You need to reinvent yourself all the time to to get yourself into the top 20%. Because with artificial intelligence here, not even around the corner, here, and the disintermediation of low-value work, you've got to have the top skill set to be able to deliver that. And um, that that's just the, the, the fact of nature, and that's what politics are going to have to uh, come with. And you look at things like universal basic income, which has been talked about, and all this kind of stuff to... to Protect. But you can't be mentally indolent. You can't <coughs> expect that there's going to be a um, you know a a role for you if you don't create it and think about it. And and you know it's a fact of fucking life, I'm afraid. Um, and the last thing that um, uh, I'm rolling this into this, which is a rule that I have always, and it's right by the side of my desk at the office, is Parkinson's law. Work expands to fill the time available it's a corollary of everything that's in this book so if you give yourself very finite amounts of time like i'll give myself 10 minutes to do this then you'll do it in 10 minutes if you have to do multiple takes and you've got an hour to do i'll go this is all morning i've got to do this then it would take all morning so give yourself it's that self-discipline thing again give yourself that uh, self-discipline to give yourself give yourself hard deadlines meet them and then you can drive on and on that basis, I'm going to drive on. I hope you enjoyed it. So that's The 8020 Revolution by Richard Koch. Well worth the read. Absolutely. It'll change your life like it did mine. Peace, comrade.